crosshairs of this government. They're from the education sector, and they're being asked to take rollbacks and cuts, and we're going to say no. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce Chris Cardina from the from the Catholic teachers, Sam Hammond from the Elementary Teachers Federation, and Brother Ben by saying we are Ontario. That's the theme of this rally, but that's a fact. Now when you look behind me, you see a beautiful pristine building, a symbol, a symbol that is supposed to represent good governance and good decision making. That, my friends, right now is a postcard. When you look behind you, you see skyscrapers. That's a symbol. That's a symbol of economics. That's a symbol of business, of multinationals, and of money. But my friends, that's a postcard as well. Because we all know it's the people that made those buildings. It's the people that work in those buildings. It's the people around us right now. It's the people watching us. That's the force and that's the power of our province. respect. So when you respect something, that means you value it, you appreciate it, and you listen to it. The recent actions from this government show exactly the opposite. There's no respect. That means there's no appreciation and there's no value to the jobs that we do. We're here today to change that, to show this government they better start respecting the power of the people. <laughs> and we've got a saying in our organization. Our organization represents 60,000 educational workers. And we live by one theme. And that theme is actions speak louder than words. My friends, this government talks about respect but they don't show us respect. Show us the respect we deserve. You know, my BlackBerry went off at 6.17 this morning from one of our members, and I promised I would relay this story to you. It's from one of our educational assistants, someone that's trusted with the duty of working with special needs children. She only makes $33,500 a year, and she said in her letter to me, Ken, I was going to buy a new furnace. I was going to put new windows in my house. I was even going to consider buying a new car. But right now, I'm not sure if I could pay the inflationary costs of my personal bills. She says, I am worried. My friends, we should not be worried. If we work hard, we deserve good wages, and we deserve the respect that we all are showing here today. a phrase and that phrase my friends is made up of six words and the six words are designed to force the government to do just that to show respect so I want you to repeat after me these six words I'm going to say it once and then I'd like everyone to say it three times stand up stand strong stand united here we go stand up stand strong My name is Chris Kaohanga and I bring you greetings from the 45,000 Ontario English Catholic teachers of this province. We are here to give added voice against lopsided austerity. We know who austerity is going to impact. We can count them off the tips of our fingers. Women, marginalized groups in our society, recent immigrants, racialized communities, and of course, us. We are 
are going to bear the brunt of these austerity policies that are being pushed. And we think it's not fair. We are prepared to say our share, our proper share of, 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 of austerity, but it's lopsided. The problem is, and we had it throughout the campaigns, we had this phrase repeated several times over and over again. And the phrase went like, together, forward, together, forward. But the way things look right now, it's more like together, separately, with the 1% out in front and the rest of us, the 99% behind. Shame. That is not Shame. right, that is not fair, and that is not acceptable. Yeah. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Sisters and brothers, what a day to have a rally. What an amazing thing to see from the front. All of the public sector, private sector unions in this province represented here today in solidarity. I want to coin a phrase, I want to coin a quick phrase. Shame, shame on this government and shame on the Kitty and his colleagues for what they're planning to do to public service workers in this province. I have a message. I have a message for the Minister of Education who on Easter Monday called me out and called my members out and shamed them for not working on Easter Monday. Minister, my members are here by the bus load today to protect our rights and to protect collective bargaining. And here's, here's what this government has done and make no mistake, they have woken up a sleeping giant in this province. to stand up for our rights, to stand up for collective bargaining in this province. And my 76,000 members, teachers, occasional teachers, DCEs, and support staff workers are here today because, we are here today in solidarity because you and us the public sector workers in this province did not cause this financial problem and we're not paying for it. So let today, let today be the first day in us standing up, in us standing up to support and protect everything we have built across this province. Solidarity! organizations that range from Sudbury and Timmins in the north to Toronto in the south to Toronto in the south and to Hamilton in the west and in the east Ottawa and Cornwall. Hi Hamilton! I hear you! Okay, we work deep in communities. We go deep into the neighborhoods where we see the impact of austerity every day in the faces of the people that we live with. 
And we know that we need to build a common cause with labor and other community organizations, cross-sectorial, cross-provincial, to take on this austerity budget. This regime creates inequality, poverty, and hardship for all of us. Social planning councils worked with the Ontario poverty, uh, with the um, in, in poverty in Ontario, and we have seen this budget turning on four or five years of work in poverty reduction, but worst of all, it has turned against the most vulnerable. We all know that this budget has said no to people on social assistance. It has said we will keep your rates so that you can barely live. Shame! And we know, we know that people on social assistance are hungry. Across this province, people are hungry because you simply run out of money halfway through the month. We are one of the wealthiest countries in the world and people are hungry. This budget also says no to people on Ontario disability support payments. And it keeps our neighbours living with disabilities poor. There's no dignity in being poor. Shame. And what's this budget say to workers on a minimum wage? People, our people who work full time, full year, and still live in poverty. There's no dignity in that. Shame! Shame! And what about my sector, health and social services? This budget says no to us too. And it says no to creating that vibrant network of health and social services that help every one of us our parents, our kids, our brothers and our sisters. And it's creating bigger crevices. And you know what? It's us that's gonna fall through those crevices. And sometimes there's no way back. We fall hurting and we fall, uh, we fall all the way through. And then just one thought I leave you. And I learned this in South America as I watched the austerity budgets of the dictatorship and that, that this budget isn't creating a more equal Ontario. In fact, income inequality is growing, the gap between the rich and the poor is growing, and this means something really important to us. It means the rich get richer, it means that they're more powerful, it means they set the budget and they set this, this particular budget. Inequality, and I just we just think about this. This growing inequality, as I stand here in front of our parliament buildings, will shake our democracy to the roots. It will destroy our democracy. It will create profound divisions between all of us. And it will undermine social cohesion. And it will lead to a situation where civicness, social peace, can only be maintained through corrosive social policies, through stereotyping people, you see that all the time, and through the heavy-handed imposition of law and order. So, today, we've come together to say no to the cuts. No to the cuts. And, and we stand here collectively to speak truth to power. We're speaking truth to power. Thank